Want an easy way to check the status of your thyroid and overall health? All you need to do is look at your nails. You might think that your nails are purely cosmetic, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Yes, the nails form a cosmetic and functional purpose, but they can also tell you a lot about what's happening on the inside of your body. This is for two reasons. The first is that your nails grow at a consistent and slow rate, which is about 3.5 millimeters per month, by the way. So it takes approximately six months for a nail that starts growing at the base to make it all the way to the end of your nail where it then gets clipped off. And the second is because your nails are considered non-essential by the body, it will frequently divert resources away from your nails during times of stress. And this process leaves signs to tell the tale of what happened to you during that time. Signs like white marks, spots, pits, divots, or lines all indicate that something happened to your body that then impacted your nails. Assuming that your nails are growing normally, which isn't always the case for thyroid patients, by the way, they can give you a six month history of your overall health. And you can check for this just by looking at them and by touching them. Nail problems are common among many people, but especially those with thyroid problems. And we'll talk about why that is here in just a second. But first, let's take a look at your nails right now so you can determine if they're healthy or not. Here's how to do it. First, take a look at their appearance. Physically look at your nails right now and ask yourself these questions. Are they uniform? Are they smooth? Do you see any marks? Are they discolored? Is your nail bed see-through? Because it should be. Do you see any pits or grooves? A healthy nail should be smooth, see-through, without pits or grooves, and uniform in color. The color you're looking for here is a fleshy pink color. The good news is that if you see anything on your nails that might be a problem, you can reverse engineer when that problem occurred, which will help you to figure out what was happening in your life at that time. Remember, your nails grow over the course of approximately six months, so you can split your nail into six equal parts, starting from the base, extending all the way to the tip. And doing this can help you figure out roughly when the trauma occurred to your body that impacted your nails. For instance, if you find a white mark or spot that happens to be in the middle of your nail, this indicates that something happened to your body about three months ago. If the mark is right at the end of your nail, about ready to be clipped off, then the problem happened about six months ago. And if the problem is right on top of your nail bed, then the issue happened within about the last month or so. If you see problems that occur throughout your entire nail bed, then whatever happened to you is still going on right now. Next, you wanna check for the integrity and the strength of your nail. You can do this by simply pressing back on your nail and seeing how much it flexes. A healthy nail should have very little give and should be quite rigid, even when pressure is applied. The longer your nail is, the more it will flex. So some flexing is definitely normal, but it shouldn't give with only minor pressure and it should feel like the nail is pushing back on you even if it is longer. If you find that your nail flexes very easily, feels brittle, or even looks like it's going to crack when you put pressure on it, then you have a problem. If your nails failed the appearance or the strength test, then your next step is to figure out what is going on. The chances are pretty high that if you have a thyroid problem, any problem that you're experiencing with your nails is most likely related to your thyroid problem. That's because of the connection between thyroid function and nail health, which we will discuss in just a second. But first, here are the most commonly found nail problems in both thyroid conditions. In hypothyroidism, roughly 70% of patients experience fragile nails, 48% experience slow growth, 40% experience thinning, and 38% experience onycholysis, which is a nail separation at the base. Other less common nail conditions found in hypothyroidism include leukonychia, which is just white spots on the nail, stripped nails, and some nail pitting. In hyperthyroidism, on the other hand, roughly 100% of patients experience koilonychia, which is depression of the nail in the center with flaring out of the nails on the side, 83% experience softening of the nails, 29 experience onycholysis, which again is nail separation, and 10% experience brittle nails. Even though these are the most common types of nail problems found in thyroid patients, this group of people is still highly susceptible to other nail problems as well. This is because of the thyroid nail connection that I mentioned previously. Your thyroid regulates your nail health by, number one, impacting the absorption of the nutrients that your nails need to grow, Number two, causing changes in body temperature, which impact how much blood flow can actually make it into your nail bed. And number three, by directly impacting keratinocytes, which are found inside of the nail. And for all of these reasons, even if you don't have any of the other nail problems that I mentioned previously, you are still at increased risk for developing other nail problems. 
And these other nail problems may be more common than the conditions we just discussed. As a thyroid patient, you should be on the lookout for these nail problems. Number one is white spots, also called leukonychia. These are white spots that usually occur on the middle of the nail, but they don't make it all the way across the nail. They are incredibly common and sometimes occur in otherwise healthy people, which causes a lot of confusion regarding their source. Based on available research, it's clear that these spots have multiple causes, including trauma, nutrient deficiencies, especially of calcium and zinc, inflammatory and autoimmune disease, and fungal infections. There's probably also a genetic component to these spots, so don't get too hung up on their cause if you're unable to find one. As a thyroid patient, you will be more prone to developing these white spots because of the impact that thyroid hormone has on the absorption of vitamins and minerals. Number two is white lines, also called Mies lines. These are white lines or bands that appear across the entire nail, and they are typically caused by serious medical conditions like kidney failure or heavy metal toxicity. They typically aren't that common in thyroid patients, but because they can be confused with leukonychia, I've included them here. Number three is pits in the nails. Nail pitting is seen in about 1% of thyroid patients and is usually caused by psoriasis, eczema, or joint inflammation disorders. Pitting of the nails is not usually directly caused by thyroid problems, but because there's a connection between hypothyroidism and psoriasis, thyroid patients are at increased risk for developing this nail problem. Number four is brittle nail syndrome. Brittle nail syndrome affects about 20% of people with women experiencing this problem two times more than men. And it causes horizontal ridges in the nail as well as splitting of the nails. Roughly 90% of thyroid patients report issues with their nails. And because the exact cause of brittle nail syndrome is not known, it's very possible that the thyroid plays a role, especially considering that thyroid problems occur in about 10 to 20% of the population. Number five is vertical lines. These are lines that run from the base of your nail all the way to the front of your nail in a vertical line. There are some conditions that result in pathological vertical lines, but very small vertical ridges are usually nothing to worry about. And number six is horizontal lines. While vertical lines may not always be a problem, horizontal lines are almost always a problem. These lines, often referred to as Bow's lines, indicate an illness, an injury to the nail, or some other skin condition that is impacting nail growth. No matter what type of nail problem that you have, there are a few things that you can do to make your nails healthier. Step number one is make sure that you avoid trauma. The number one most common cause of nail problems is definitely trauma to the nail. Trauma can come in the obvious form of slamming your finger in a door, but it can also come in the not so obvious form of frequent hand washing, the use of chemicals on your nails, or even manicures. These can all disturb the keratin cross-linking found inside of your nail bed, which weakens the nail, causes brittleness, and makes the nail susceptible to splitting. This is the most obvious and easiest first step. Step number two, if you have a thyroid problem, is to optimize thyroid function. This one sounds obvious, but it's missed by so many thyroid patients who are walking around with subpar thyroid function without even realizing it. A quick and easy way to tell if your thyroid is optimized is by looking at the presence or absence of thyroid symptoms. If you are taking thyroid medication, then you shouldn't be experiencing low energy, weight gain, cold intolerance, hair loss, constipation, and so on. If you are experiencing these problems, then that's a clear indication that you need to adjust your thyroid medication. Taking the right dose and type of thyroid medication can increase the rate at which your nails grow and can improve the health of your nails very quickly. Oftentimes, just taking thyroid medication is not enough, which is why we have some additional steps. Step number three is to take a multivitamin. There's no question that many nutrients and minerals and vitamins are required for your nails to be healthy but it can be very difficult to figure out exactly which one is causing you a problem. A simple shotgun approach to treating multiple nutrient deficiencies at once is with the use of a multivitamin. Taking a multivitamin will help bring all of your vitamins, nutrients, and minerals up to an acceptable level that should allow your nails to grow. And taking a multivitamin will probably also provide some additional benefits to your thyroid as well. Step number four is to reduce your intake of calcium or take a vitamin K2 supplement. There are some people who have reported that taking calcium supplements has increased the strength of their nails. Given that the nails do contain a small amount of calcium, this may make sense. But some people have also reported that taking excess calcium may also cause those white spots we mentioned previously called leukonychia. Taking a vitamin K2 supplement may help solve this problem by moving the calcium in your body away from your nails and into your bones where you want it. Step number five is to take collagen peptides. 
One study showed that taking 2.5 grams per day of a bioactive peptide compound called Verisol in patients with brittle nail syndrome saw increased nail growth by 12% and a decreased frequency of broken nails by 42%. Additionally, after 24 weeks, 64% saw a global improvement in brittle nails and 80% agreed that their nail health had improved. Collagen works by stimulating keratinocytes, which upregulates the production of proteins that provide strength, integrity, and moisture to the nail. Because of this mechanism of action, taking collagen will most likely provide some benefit to anyone who takes it, regardless of what type of nail condition that they have. Step number six is to take silicon. Another great nail supplement for just about any nail problem is silicon. This is because silicon is found in high concentrations inside of the nail. There's a debate about whether or not silicon is considered essential to the body, which is why most people aren't aware of it. But one thing is for sure. Most people who take it do see improvement in their hair, skin, and nails. I personally take silicon every day for its benefits on blood vessel health, and there's no question that my hair and nails grow like crazy when I'm taking it. Your mileage may vary, of course, but it's worth looking into if you're suffering from nail problems. For best results, use about 10 to 20 milligrams of monomethylsilane triol each day as your source of silicon. If the health of your nails is important to you, then you'll probably also be interested in the health of your hair and skin as well. In that case, I'd recommend checking out this video next, which discusses one ingredient that can help all three.